Hello, my name is Annie from the Knits and Burls podcast, and today I am going to show you my knitting journal setup. Um, in my most recent podcast episode, I showed you guys briefly the new knitting journal that I started this year, and I had a few people ask if I could show it more in depth, so that is what we are going to do today. Um, before I turn the camera around, I just wanted to show you, this is the journal that I have, and I'll link it below um, the name of this. But honestly, we just had this um, upstairs not being used. And so I decided to put it to use, but I do actually really like it so far. It has um, dotted pages, as you can see. So it's made it really easy to write in and keep it organized. So yeah, this is the journal that I'm using. And like I said, I'll have it linked below if you are interested in this one. But let's go ahead and turn the camera around and I will show you how I have mine set up. We have a little helper today. Not necessary, but uh, he is an extremely good helper. So if you have an assistant like mine, then your journal will be off to a great start. <laughs> so all the supplies that I use to set up a journal entry um, is the yarn, yarn labels if I have them, a glue stick, hole puncher, pen, scissors, and of course a baby and a cup of coffee doesn't hurt. So today I'm going to show you how I have my journal set up as well as do an entry with you so that you can see the actual process. So inside here, um, this journal that I got actually came with like a table of contents page, which has been really helpful. So you just fill this out as you fill up your journal and then you can reference the table of contents page so that you know where in the journal you have journal entries, which has been really great. And then the rest of it is just the dotted page that I showed you earlier. So you can see all these little dots. I don't know if that's called like a dot grid or what, but so far I've really liked it. So my first page, how I had mine set up, I went through all of my works in progress at the beginning of the year and I documented them. One of my big goals this year is to work down my whips. So as you can see, as I finish a project, I give it a check mark. And then if I decide to frog it, it gets a big X. So I'm making good headway already. Let's see, I have one, two, three, seven projects off the needles, either finished or frogged as of this year. So that's not bad for only being in February. The next page that I have laid out, I did a calendar viewpoint. Um, I wanted to keep track of all the finished objects that I was able to accomplish throughout the year. And so I broke it out by months. So as you can see in January, I finished two pairs of socks and a dishcloth. And then so far in February, I finished a dishcloth, two cardigans and a hat. So I thought that'd be a fun way, really mainly to motivate me to see how many finished objects I could accomplish every year, every month. Then the next page I have, um, this goes with just my big goal of de-stashing as much as possible this year. Um, so what I did was I created a key at the top um, and then each of these circles coordinate to something else. And that way I didn't have to write up, you know, that I bought something used or sold it. I figured that would take up too much space in each box. So I created a key up here to help me. So in January, I purchased 13 skeins of yarn plus 13 minis and a cone of yarn. And then I used up two skeins and then sold 62 skeins plus a mini. And how I've chosen to do the used up portion, I am just counting it after I have finished the project. I didn't want to try to worry about weighing out how much yarn I used each month. Instead, I'm just, you know, so this month I finished a cardigan. So I will include the entire cardigan into my out, even though I didn't knit up the entire cardigan in one month. I hope that makes sense. And that's obviously... With this whole journal, it's totally up to you, right? That's the great thing about it. It's just a creative outlet for us to keep track of our projects and you do it as it works best for you. But that's what I found was the least confusing for me. And then this page I've kept empty. I'm 
not totally sure what I'm going to do with it yet. So we will see. So now getting into the project pages. This is obviously the most fun part, at least for me. Um, it's basically just like a scrapbook for the projects that you're knitting. I found that the prompts included in Ravelry were, were really helpful for me to guide my journal entry for each project. So I went through my um, projects as they were written out on Ravelry and I just pulled from that at least to get me started. So I've written the name in a fun font and then the designer name and then I wrote made for me what size I'm knitting the needles I'm using my gauge or actually the gauge that's supposed to be in the pattern then my gauge the yarn I'm using cast on date cast off date and any notes that I wanted to keep track of so like for the big cozy cardi I really wanted to keep track of um, what cast ons and bind offs I did any um, problems that I had throughout, things like that. And then on this side, I had the yarn tags. So I went ahead and cut them out and glued them onto the page. And then the most fun thing, I think, um, I did a hole punch and then added the yarn on top. And that way I had a little bit of a document of what yarn I ended up using. I've seen some people too, they will just cut the yarn and then tape it on their page. But I also saw this idea and I thought it looked super fun. So that is what I have chosen to do. And I think my plan right now is to put pictures in either, you know, through the process of knitting it or the finished object. All right, let me settle him really quick and then I will show you a journal entry as I would set it up. Okay, the assistant is settled and happy. So let me show you how I would set up a journal prompt. Okay, so first off, I have added the new project that I'm adding to my journal. I just add the title of the pattern plus what page I'm gonna be adding it to. And then let us find that page. All right, hopefully I can show this to you well. It might be a little bit awkward, <laughs> but um, we will see what we can do. And like I said earlier, this is really just whatever you want to do creatively. You know, if you like a different um, style of writing, I feel like it's a fun way to experiment with all of that.
see this is my general layout that I'm starting starting with. And if it was a sweater pattern that I was casting on, I would probably add additional information, like what size and gauge that I have. And then comes the fun part. Next up, I'm going to cut out the yarn labels because I have them and glue them to the page. And then I will also add the yarn samples to the very top. I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. how I set up my journal for a new project. Um, if you guys end up doing anything like this or have a journal of your own, I would love to hear about it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope that you draw some inspiration from this. Talk to you later. Bye.